Hello, I'm back with another video. So the title says it is Stupidity from the Gamosphere. Here I'll be covering five different topics that generally have people doing, talking, uh, saying stupid things in the Gamosphere. What is the Gamosphere? It is the video gaming community at large, the media, the video gaming media, and um, general st uh, and um, uh, the fan base, you know, pundits, all those people, just stupid things. And uh, we'll get started with topic number one after the cut. Our first topic for that we're going to cover is the wonderful, wonderful mutterances of Michael Pachter, a.k.a. man who ignores the obvious. Michael Pachter, uh, last week, said some stupid things, uh, generally talking about how Satori Watt is a terrible leader and uh, Kaz Harai is a great leader. Um, let's see, firing the hell out of, firing 5,000 people, closing 20 stores, um, selling off your old headquarters and its surrounding buildings, and firing developers <clears throat> in your gaming business is not great leadership. That's eliminating redundancies. or trickle-down economics at its uh, core. Um, Satori Wada is using a more old-school approach to being a CEO of a company, as in he's the leader. Um, he's actually leading. He's, you know, he's like, okay, we made a mistake, we're gonna take pay cuts. We're gonna do everything we can to rectify it. So, basically, we can see that there's a disconnect. Now, I'm gonna put on my poli sci hat for a little bit and uh, tell you a little bit of a little bit a little something um, America's <clears throat> middle class grew during the after the uh, Second World War during the 40s 50s 60s all the way up to the 70s because we had a system where um, the people at the top weren't getting these huge breaks and such. So a CEO may have made like 1.5 million dollars, but he he was only making maybe like three or four times what the second highest paid um, specialists in his business might be making. Um, he might have had stock options. That's basically how Nintendo is structured. It's old school like that, um, which actually makes the workers have an incentive. Like if I work hard, I can maybe someday be like those people. In American companies today, which if you follow any of the news, it's very corrupt. Um, you have CEOs making millions of dollars and running companies into the ground and still getting golden parachutes, which is where the, um, the CEO runs a company to the ground into bankruptcy, but when they leave, they get like a uh, $100 million bail, a uh, $100 million golden parachute. So it's like they ran a company to the ground, they still get paid. Um, Nintendo don't, don't roll like that. So, um, you can see a huge income inequality in the newer form of, uh, business versus the older form of business when there was much wider, um, <clears throat> prosperity in all the classes. Because if your workers get paid a decent wage and aren't worried about losing their job if times are tough then they're willing to work hard in order to make through things that would normally you know they'd be fired and they make their money they spend money so that other businesses have to hire people in order to keep up with the um, demands okay you know it's basic economic theory you can look it up our next topic after the cut. <clears throat> Our next topic, as the title says, 
is EA's April Fool joke. Not very funny. <laughs> <clears throat> In EA, in April 1st, EA's, uh, someone at, uh, <clears throat> D EA DICE, um, EA's, uh, under studio DICE, um, did something, uh, wrote a series of tweets, uh, trolling, uh, Nintendo's Wii U, <clears throat> which is funny because they can't seem to make, um, which is, uh, and Peter Moore, their COO, basically had to play damage control. The funny thing is that, um, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, it's not smart for EA to do this. It's not smart for... Look, <clears throat> this is stupid for three reasons. First of all, you never know who you're going to have to work with in this industry, okay? You shouldn't badmouth any particular... Um, developer or publisher because you never know who you're gonna have to work with second of all of all companies to talk about another company's product EA like dice can't really say shit about um, anyone's game products because they have put out every single game they've put out has required huge amounts of patches in order to make it playable so they really in terms of talking about <clears throat> quality products Dice needs to sit in a corner and shut up. <laughs> Number three, most importantly, um, people who believe that this is just, you know, this was just Dice, look. Um, as someone who's worked for um, a large corporation, um, generally speaking, the attitude, attitude filters down, okay? If the people at the top are treating a certain other company like shit, it filters down, okay? So you had the people at the top of EA <clears throat> treating Nintendo like shit. So basically, all the other studios in EA, the people, it filters down. They think, oh, it's okay to treat them like shit. And that wasn't smart. That was EA's problem. Um, if I were Nintendo... Um, and, you know, all indications say that there's going to be a gaming crash and a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. I'd say, fuck EA. That's what I'd say, personally. I'd be like, oh, screw them. Let them suffer. But, you know, this is business and you never know who you're going to have to work with. So Nintendo took the high road and didn't say anything. Sometimes I wish they would be more aggressive, but they're classy. What can I say? Next topic coming up next. I'm back, and our third topic is people who continue to say that Sony is fine, and Microsoft is fine. Microsoft fired <clears throat> um, quite a few of their first party developers um, last week. So yeah, they they Microsoft didn't do it well either. As a matter of fact, the only company that's still hiring people is Nintendo. Sony's firing first-party developers in their gaming division. Um, Microsoft is firing first-party developers in their gaming division. A lot of stupid things going on. What are you going to do? In the case of Microsoft, I can understand, though, because their first-party games are garbage. Connect is a joke. Connect Sports. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, what, whatever. But this goes out to people who are saying that Microsoft and Sony are fine. They're not fine. If you're firing your workers, that means you're trying to save money. You're doing cost-cutting measures. Okay, you're doing short-term cost-cutting measures so you can go to the people above you saying, we save this much money. Now, long-term, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face because these are the people who can make you money. It's like quitting school because you don't have enough money to pay um, your tuition 
or you don't want to take out enough loans to pay your tuition. Yes, you're in debt because you're paying for your tuition. Or yes, you're in debt because you, you worked out something so you could get it. But the thing is that you have a degree. Your degree increases your person your, your your worth. Okay? Like I have a bachelor's I have a I have a double bachelor's. I have a bachelor's in political science and a bachelor's in um, sociology. So basically my bachelor's is worth like one of my bachelors is worth like let's say seventy five thousand dollars my second bachelor's worth seventy five thousand dollars so because that's how much it would have cost if, <clears throat> if i didn't have a almost full ride scholarship like ninety percent scholarship so basically like that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so my personal worth, I went to private school, so let's say that's $50,000 for all of my private school. So right off the bat, I'm worth that much money, okay? I'm worth $225,000, no, $200,000, okay? Right out of school, worth $200,000, okay? That means that if I get hired for a job, I'm not looking for anything less than, like, if someone, if someone, if I go for a job and it's less than six figures, I'm insulted. Like that's, <laughs> okay. So basically, like, because I put that investment, okay, I have that level of education, I have that little expertise, I expect this much, you know, I, I can, I can, prov I can give you this much um, economic leverage, okay. So basically, Microsoft is firing these people who increase the overall, the overall economic leverage of their company. I mean, the people who make these games, if they were making games that, that you know, were uh, relevant and were selling, would be making these companies money. But they aren't, so they got fired. But these two companies are going to be fine. They're firing people, that, but they'll be fine. Yet again, a stupid premise. Uh, yes, here we go again. Here is our um, fourth topic. Our main topic is coming up after this one. It's going to be a little bit more in depth, so um, it's going to be longer. But our fourth topic is gamers who say something without the full facts look listen this is in general um if you don't have the full facts it's really hard to say something if you don't have the full facts involved jumping to conclusions without the full facts involves makes you look like an idiot makes you look stupid don't do it i myself have been guilty of this so i know very well from first-hand experience um don't venture an opinion until you have the full facts. If not the full facts, at least 90%. Supposition and assumption is fine and dandy, but if you are missing enough bits and pieces of the picture, you won't know what's going on. It's like that old fable about the three blind men and the elephant. Each of them felt a different part of the elephant and thought it was a different thing. Like One man felt the tusks and he said it's a spear. Another man felt the trunk and said it was a, a hose. Another man felt the tail and said, oh, it's a broom. And neither of them, like, if they put all the stuff together, they could have guessed it was an elephant, but they, they, they made an assumption based on a very small amount of evidence. Don't make assumptions. It's not good. It leads to stupidity. Which leads me to my final topic. After the cut. As the title says, this is Capcom's folly, yet again. Now, if you watch my videos, you know a while ago I said that Capcom took, made a stupid move. They took their money that they made from Monster Hunter 4, and they took that money and opened up a mobile studio. <laughs> now, 
they've now slashed their forecasts for how much money they were going to make. And they claim, well, the reason we didn't make the money is because the mobile studio wasn't working. Look, listen, okay? Mobile gaming is a flash-in-the-pan style of profit, okay? You make a lot of profit short-term, right? First six months, year, year and a half, two years. But after a while, your install base gets tired of the, you know, nickel and diming, and they want to play a real game, and they leave, okay? We've all played um, Facebook app mobile games or on our phone mobile games, stuff like that that were microtransaction heavy. And yeah, we, we look, I'll be the first one to tell you, I loved Marvel um, Assault on the Facebook, loved it. But after about a year, not even a year, like six months, it was just like, ah, these microtransactions are killing me, okay? And a lot of gamers feel that way. They get tired of the constant nickel and diming, so they move on. And then the install base goes down, the ad revenue goes down, and, you know, the profit margin gets real thin, like razor, like paper thin. And so, you know, you either have to constantly come out with new things and drop old things, or you have to make a mobile game that is more substantial than most mobile game developers want to do because they want to basically nickel, the whole profit margin behind the uh, mobile gaming is either advertisements, nickel and diming you with microtransactions, or combination of both, okay? That's what mobile gaming is. So, if you don't have enough numbers, the ad, the nickel and diming isn't going to work, and, and advertisements is not going to work if you don't have enough traffic coming in. So, Capcom made this mistake, and, you know, I don't feel sorry for them. You know, you do stupid things like this, it comes back on. And Capcom, Capcom's been making, capcom been messing up for a long time. <laughs> Hopefully... You know, I've said this before, I don't think Capcom's going to see the end of this console generation. Um, by either reckoning, by either Sony and Microsoft's six, seven, eight year cycle, or by Nintendo's five year cycle, I don't think they're going to see an end of, the, of their console generation, because they, these people have been messing up, okay? Capcom may have been messing up big. Um, they canceled like all the Mega Man games on Mega Man's 25th anniversary because KG Inafune left, which is stupid. It's like, oh, well, oh, shoot. Uh, Miyamoto left. No more Mario games. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, AJ Numa left. Oh, oh, we can't, we can't make, we can't, we can't make any more, uh, we, we can't make any more. Zelda games because A.G. Enuma left. You know, <laughs> that's stupid. That's like someone. That's like owning. Basically, what Capcom did is like you own. A, it's like I own a barcade. One of my bartenders left, so I stopped selling drinks. That's that's stupid. <laughs> I mean, you're dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> okay. Well, he was the only one who knew how to make a classical vodka martini. Well. Um, you know what? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. That's stupid. That's dumb. And I think Capcom gets the Dumb Company of the Month award. EA comes into a close second. It's, it's like close. It's close, but at least Michael Moore was able to, to dial it back with that whole recant, with, the, with that BS statement he released. But, you know. I'm just saying. So, that's the end of this video. Um, if you have any nominations for stupid things done in the Gamosphere, leave them in the comment section. I'll check them out and possibly add them to my next uh, Gamosphere video. You guys have a good day.